Um, so today I will be going over um, the RBPM communication with industry throughout our IQA process. I will provide an update on communication enhancements under GDUFA 2. I will also provide an overview of the ANDA assessment timeline and identify when communications may occur. I will also highlight important points for communications with OPQ. So communication during the assessment, what is new or has changed? OPQ can now request additional information in either an information request letter or a discipline review letter. Multiple IRs and DRLs can be issued in one GDUFA cycle. Information request letters can be issued by a discipline or a subdiscipline. It's primarily used to request additional information or clarification needed to continue the assessment. It can be issued as early as once filing is found acceptable, and it will usually include a requested response due date. Most of the time, information requests will be issued through email, but it can also be sent out as a letter or initiate through a teleconference. Discipline review letters, um, they are issued when all quality subdisciplines have substantially completed their assessments. They represent, um, it represent preliminary findings by the discipline upon review of the submitted information to date. And it may or may not represent full supervisory concurrence. The DRL is expected to be issued by the mid-cycle date for standard application that's five months plus 30 days, for priority applications that's four months plus 30 days. It will also include a request response due date. And again, similar to the IR, it is usually issued through email. They can also be sent by letter or initiate through teleconference. If no deficiencies are identified by the mid-cycle date, a no common CRL um, will be issued. And here I have a very high-level overview of our assessment timeline. Once an application is received in-house, um, the filing assessment will begin. And while filing is taking place, OPQ will triage the application to identify the IQA review team. Um, at that point, the team will also initiate the kickoff meeting and start the preparation for the application. As soon as filing is found acceptable, the IQA team will begin phase one of their assessment. And during this phase, the first IR can be issued as early as when filing is found acceptable. At around the midpoint of the review cycle, all quality subdisciplines should have substantially completed their assessment. And any comments or deficiencies identified up to that point will be issued through the DRL. Once the applicant submits the response to the DRL, the IQA team will begin phase two of their assessment. And during this phase, additional IRs may be issued um, on a rolling basis until it is um, no longer feasible. At around 30 days before the GDUFA date, um, the IQA team will finalize their review, and OPQ will provide um, an overall quality recommendation to OGD to take action. And OGD, by the GDUFA date, will either issue a CR letter, an approval, or a tentative approval. So what is the impact? Assessments of ANDAs will begin earlier in the review cycle. Prior to GDUFA 2, the um, OPQ would triage the application and assemble the IQA team and have the kickoff meeting only after the application has been found acceptable. By initiating this process much earlier on in the um, review cycle, the review team is able to provide feedback on their, um, the applicant's submission at around the midpoint of the assessment period. And the applicants will also have an opportunity to resolve issues within the same cycle. The overall concept here is to improve assessment efficiency and to reduce review cycles to hopefully get generics to market faster. What can industry do to assist? Probably the most important thing that we've been hearing at this conference is it's very important for industry to submit high quality submissions at the start. Responses to the IR and the DRL should be um, submitted completely and promptly with it, um, by the requested due date. Unsolicited information should not be included in these responses. If any update that is needed to be made to your application, please contact the RBPM directly. And applicants can learn from previous requests so that they have a better understanding of what the IQA team is looking for during their assessment. Other important points to consider, the RBPM um, can be contacted directly for all quality-related questions. Please continue to use the OGD RPM as the point of contact for overall application status and other inquiries. Be aware of the IR and DRL response deadline 
include only the requested information when responding. Please note that additional unsolicited information may impact assessment, time, and goal date, and correctly code all your submission and amendments to ensure that accurate triage and goal dates are applied. That's all I have for today. Thank you for your attention. Right. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you for having me. Um, so I believe it's that 55% of communication is uh, body language, and 38% is tone of voice, and only 7% is the actual words. Well, I'm here today to talk to you about that 7%, uh, specifically about the application communication between industry and FDA and how we can work together to communicate more effectively in a meaningful way. So with that, I'm going to start with roles and responsibility. You might receive different type of communication from different type of project manager. So who are we and what do we really do? So there is the OGD RPM. Um, like myself, the RPM manage the entire ANDA. So they are your point of contact for all review status updates. And the discipline PM, um, an example would be the RBPM or the Regulatory Business Process Manager from OPQ, or the labeling discipline PM. So the discipline PM is responsible for issuing the review, the discipline review letters or the DRLs or the IRs or information requests. Um, they are your point of contact for all questions related to your DRLs and IR only. So as a reminder, like Jen said, all the other ANDA-related inquiries will still go to the OGD RPM. Um, next, I'm going to go over some of the changes in GDUFA 2, specifically um, the review status updates, which is covered under Section 2B, Number 10 of the Commitment Letter. Also, the anticipated missed goal date and the informal notification of major deficiency. So talk about review status update. We have come a long way since the beginning of Get for One. So at the beginning, the RPM would provide a status update of please call back in three months, um, to now providing a detailed status update for all the disciplines. And even though providing status update was just a courtesy, we understand it's important for planning purposes, and that's why it's been added to the Gadoo for Two program. Um, also, under Gadoo for Two, there are specific RPM touch points in which, um, at a certain time frame, you would get a communication from the RPM. So, who's responsible for status update? So FDA can only communicate with the authorized representative on your 356H. Um, we want to make sure or ensure confidentiality for each applicant. So therefore, we strongly encourage you to update the contact information on your 356H. Um, also, when the RPM receive um, a status update inquiry, um, they will try to respond to your request within two business day. Keep in mind, a response would just be an acknowledgement of your call or email uh, while they have to reach out to a different group of the discipline review to obtain more detailed information. So what are the RPM touch points? When your ANDA is submitted and after it's been acceptable for review, um, you will receive a filing acknowledgement letter. After that, you will receive an introductory call from the assigned RPM. At any point, if the ANDA was reassigned to a new RPM, that new RPM will also call the authorized representative to introduce him or herself. So you know that um, that person will be your point of contact for all um, review status update. Throughout the, throughout the um, review process, the RPM will also provide status update to let you know whether your application is on track or not. Um, you also receive notification when an action is coming and when your A&D has been um, entered the clearance phase. Um, so to reflect 
committee changes and the Gadoo for Two commitment letter, the commitment letter. FDA has also issued a new communication map. Um, it was issued on October 6, 2017, and the map 5200.12, um, it is called Communicating Abbreviated New Drug Application Review Status Updates with Industry. So this will be a good resource for you um, to see what are the changes with communication. All the communication um, that the RPM get, including incoming or outgoing, um, will be documented and logged. So um, these communications are also accessible to all senior management. So in case if there is an inquiry um, made to our senior management, they will be able to look up the history of all the communication between you and the RPM um, to better help you understand um, the situation. We will also um, evaluate the communications to make sure that the status update requests do not impede the RPM workload or progress of the other ANDAs. And we want to see if the requests are also value added. Another type of communication you might get from the RPM is when FDA learned that the pull date may be missed in that situation. Um, the RPM will reach out to the authorized agent and notify them of the delay. If available, the RPM will provide a general nature of the delay and the anticipated or the pending um, discipline. Also, if available, the RPM will provide an estimated time frame for completion. So in a situation when the RPM learned that a major deficiency is uh, likely forthcoming. They will also reach out to the authorized agent to let them know that um, a major deficiency has been preliminary identified. Um, and they will um, let the authorized representative know that an official action will be uh, coming in the near future and to make sure you review that deficiency when you receive it. So what can you do to help us? Um, please note that the RPM touch points is where you will be contacted regarding your application. Um, if there is a need to get the status update outside of each touch point, uh, feel free to reach out to the RPM. However, we do ask that um, you don't make these requests excessively. Um, this way, it will um, make sure that the RPM can efficiently um, manage your application and all the other applications that they're also managing. Um, other resources, like I mentioned, the map. And um, if the RPM, if your RPM is out of the office, um, you can reach out to the covering RPM or the assigned TLs. So I've attached the um, board chart for the division project management so you know who to reach out to. And with that concludes my part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Dr. Jason Rodriguez. Um, Dr. Rodriguez is a laboratory chief of branch one at the FDA Division of